In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this simple ring using either basic tools or some more advanced ones. So let's get started. And this might look a little complex with the line work that's going on with it, but it's really not. And it's actually only two pieces of wire. And speaking of that wire, you're going to need some 16 gauge wire or 1.3 millimeter. And this could be round or square. I'm going to be using square. And this ring is going to be a size nine and a half. To make sure everything's going to be the right size, you need to measure the inside diameter of your ring sizer. And then we have to do a little math. So just take the inner diameter that we just measured and add the thickness of the metal you're going to be using. And then multiply that by 3.14 or pi to figure out how long it needs to be to make a ring the right size. But we need a little bit extra material. So add 40% on top of that and we should get around 90 millimeters. But if you don't want to deal with all the math right now, you can just use 200 millimeters and we'll be cutting it down to size anyways. So I'm just going to take my digital calipers and set them to 90 and mark my metal. And at that mark, fold it in half. And then you can just cut off the excess so both sides are the same measurement. And then I'm just going to use some parallel pliers to tighten this up. You're going to want to anneal your metal if it's not already annealed. And I'm going to be using this Smart Flux so I don't get any fire scale on my pieces as I'm heating it. And it will also just keep everything cleaner. And this stuff is pretty easy to use. It just heat up your piece a little bit and then spray it on and it'll instantly make a coating over your entire piece. And then you can go back to heating it. So with that all cleaned up, I'm going to take the open ends and put it into my bench vise. You can also use pliers to hold this. And the looped end is going to go into my drill. Then all I need to do is run the drill slowly and get a nice tight twist out of all of this. And once you get it to your liking, you're going to take this off and do it to another piece, but in the opposite direction. So after that, you should have something like this, where both of these are going the opposite directions. And if you did everything the same, the twists on them should line up. So if you remember, our measurement for the ring needed to be about 64 millimeters long. And if we check this, it is now shorter than it was, but it's also thicker now. So we need to flatten it out a bit to make it a little bit longer and the right size. And this is where some style options come in. If you don't solder this before flattening it, and it'll leave little gaps in between everything. Or if you solder it all now, it'll make sure everything is nice and tight. I'm going to be soldering mine, and I'm going to be using solder paste to do so. Just like before, I'm going to heat my piece and spray it with the flux. And then apply my solder paste down the length of the piece. After that, all I need to do is heat it up until the solder flows and it makes everything one piece. Once that's done, we're going to need to clean these off using a pickling solution. This is basically a dry acid that you put into water and heat up and it will eat any of the leftover flux or oxidation off of your metal and make it nice and clean. Once the metal is done pickling, we need to flatten it out. And one way to do this is using a flat hammer along with a metal bench block. And you're going to want to hammer this down until it's the same thickness as the wire originally started off, which is 1.3 millimeters. This isn't the most accurate way to do it, and it will deform the metal a little bit, so you're going to have to straighten it back out. Another way to do this is to use a rolling mill with flat rollers. This will give you more control and consistency over your piece and allow you to get these done much quicker. And by doing this, it's going to make your wire a bit longer because you're squishing it. And no matter how you do this, you're going to get some deformation to the metal. And you can quickly straighten all this out using your hammer and your bench block. So I cut the ends off the piece and I can now measure out the 64 millimeters that we figured out in the beginning. And instead of cutting a straight line where I marked it, I'm going to cut a diagonal so everything will match up and there'll be no seam. And this isn't the only way to do this. It's just the easiest way I found to do it. With both of those cut, I'm going to file them down to make sure that they're as smooth as possible. So there we go, they both should be ready to go now. And you can solder them together now and round it, or you can round them on their own and solder the two rings together, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the back end of a ring mandrel to get this into just a U shape, and then use some pliers to bend it the rest of the way and line everything up. Or if you happen to own a ring bender, you can use that and it would make this go a lot quicker. Either way, once you have them all closed up, you need to solder them together. I'm just going to be using the same hard solder paste as I've been using on the whole thing so far, and flux. So after soldering it and cleaning it off in the pickling solution, we need to round it out. And you could do this using the ring mandrel and a rawhide mallet. If you don't already know, a rawhide mallet won't leave any marring or marks on your piece, so you can hammer away at it and it won't mess it up. But this does take a while to do, but this will work. I prefer to use a ring stretcher for this, but either way works, and I'm using both pieces done both ways to make one ring. But anyways, here they are, and you can see there's a small gap between them, and I want to make this as tight as possible, so I'm going to sand down the inside of these, so when they come together, they're going to have nice, strong solder joints. 
And the sandpaper I'm using is just some wet dry 400 grit with a little bit of water on it. I'm going to be using my Smith's little torch to solder all this together. But before I can do that, I need to preheat everything and spray flux on, and then add my hard silver solder paste. When it comes to placing the solder, I'm just putting it on every point that has a flat spot that's going to be coming in contact with the other ring. And then all I need to do is take the other ring and place it on top of it and line everything up and solder them both together. And if you see it moving around or becoming unaligned, you can use a solder pick or some tweezers to move it back. And there we go, our ring is completely put together now and it is the right size. I'm just going to take a file to the outside of this and make sure everything is nice and uniform and take out any marks that I might have left forming it into this shape. And use some rubber polishing bits to clean it up a little bit more before mixing up some liberal sulfur in some hot water and adding a black patina to this ring. And with that black finish on it, I'm now going to polish it. The polish will remove the black from the outside, but leave all the low spots with a nice little black finish. And you don't have to use the large polishing machine that I'm using, you can always use the ones that go with the Dremel or a rotary tool. But once you're done polishing, you need to remove all the polish from your piece, so I'm going to be using a ultrasonic cleaner. You can also use hot soapy water and a toothbrush. And there we go, it's all nice and clean and polished now, and ready to be worn. So I hope you found that helpful, and let me know if you make one of these. And if you're interested in any of the stuff I used in the video, I'll make sure I have links to everything in the description below. So if you found this video to be helpful whatsoever, leave a like. If you have any questions, leave a comment. And if you want more videos like this one, subscribe to my channel. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!